Michael James Parker, I am a poet. Yes, yes, it bloody well did indeed. Give us a round of applause for that. Now, some of you thought you were here to see poets versus MCs. You did? Well, the thing is that uh, since I've come into a little bit of money, and thanks to the uh, wonderfully low rate of inheritance tax, um, I've decided I can actually buy a few rappers uh, for my team. They've been doing incredibly well, so I've decided to uh, include a few rappers on my side, and, uh, and suddenly they've, they've turned towards, towards the right. Um, which, which is where I'm going to be representing tonight. I'm going to be standing on the right. Uh, I'm going to be really representing uh, all that is right, hard-working families, doing the right thing, and uh, generally moving society forward in a way that works for the taxpayer. Um, so, I'd like to just do a little quick straw poll before we start. How many of you here voted Tory at the last election? There is such a thing as a shy Tory, I hear. Yes, 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 okay. Um, well, well, I'll be turning you towards our side. Uh, just uh, for uh, you know, any UKIP here? Um, okay. Um, <laughs> damn, damn right, absolutely. You, um, I, did, I didn't just want to come. We're afraid of hearing world music. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I, 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 um, you know, I'm sure that people wouldn't vote UKIP because the Tories are doing a damn fine job, actually. Uh, any Liberals? Oh, oh, okay. Um, yes, as much enthusiasm as we expected there also. <laughs> have we any Brexiters? You may have, you know, thought about it quite deeply and, uh, and come up with some really important reasons why, uh, you know, we would be better out of Europe. So, come on, give us a cheer, all you Brexiters. Oh. It's going to be a tough crowd. Um, I think Brexit is more likely to be watching football. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, well, I, I think uh, we might as well start. Um, we, tonight I'm going to be... Um, first I shall extol the virtues of trickle-down economics. Um, so, uh, I'm, Yes, I'm, I should have said, to any children, in, there may be some unpleasant political concepts being coming from stage. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope your parents will clarify the right way. Well, if you mind getting off my stage, um, I, I've got some policy to deliver. It is people's stage. I will be putting forward people's perspective after you've heard his lordship. My stage. <laughs> Trickle down. Trickle down if you don't and you won't understand the economics, then at least you can appreciate the poetry. My private enterprise is like a champagne glass raised to heaven. I'll take my fill, I'll swill and swig, and should any overspill, well, that is yours. A gift of my abundance. Well, I say yours, I mean others as my brothers in arms and in property, and in the new opportunities in health, education and justice will be first to taste the droplets of my bounty. And those who serve best will take the rest that may brim over the rim of the ring round which they lick to take the lappings. And then those who do my will, who do the drilling of the oil for my car and the stitching of the cloth with which you dress me, and the digging in the dirt to make the feast for my plate be, may be fortunate to wash their filthy hands in my dribblings. And if you kneel, at my feet and lick the moisture from my shoes if any golden liquid has trickled down my legs the flat and bitter dregs of wine well lick it up lap it up lick it lap it you love it trickle down yes indeed we've got a toy voter already one, I've turned one, I'll turn the rest of you by the time this show's over. You'll be going out to vote Tory. Trickle down! 
trickle down if you don't and you won't understand the economics then at least you can appreciate the poetry as the value of my property appreciates appreciate it damn it i put the money in your banks i keep interest low so you can borrow for your needs my greed is good i feed your freedom as i feed upon your labor i'm doing you a favor and don't fret i won't forget it if you let it go let's say fair it's only fair I let it go as well. Until, that is, I want it back. And then I'll let you know in no uncertain terms that your letting is getting impossible. Trickle down, trickle down. If you don't and you won't understand the economics, then at least you can appreciate the poetry. What? You want a nation of low achievers? Beggars, receivers of welfare benefits. Where's the benefit in that? Where's the motivation to see it succeed like I have? I'm a wealth creator. And sooner or later, you'll get it. This is how the system works. The fatter a fat cat gets, the better for you debtors and squatters and nutters in tatters in the gutters as we go get us trendsetters, big hitters, get as rich as we can and scatter a little bit of the pot of what we've got as you feel it bitter patter. Be happy that you've let us off our taxes. We're not your babysitters. The shitter things get the better. The shot in the arm. The kick up your butt that you butt that you've got to get fitter. Do better. When you're richer, you won't want to pay taxes, so stop your lefty chitter-chatter. If I choose to move my money offshore, well that's a private matter. If you tax me, do I not bleed? If you tax me, I may leave to some country freed of the burden of taxes. Some haven where I haven't got to pay, and there I may stay and bleed your economy dry. Have I no feelings, you say, and I hear, see my tears trickle down, trickle down. Trickle down. <laughs> Vote for me! Vote for me! I feel as though I can safely invite you to sit a little closer to the stage. It is safe. It is safe. Proximity does not mean that the ideas ooze into you. Thank you. You're right. The bigger the fat cat, the larger the need for a litter tray. Um, on that note, and the first of the performers there to be putting the people's perspective across, please do enjoy Ella Geitch. Oh, I love the way you said that as well, like, Ella Geitch. That's like how it should be said, actually. Um, Oh, I can't really see any of you. I'm not, I'm sorry guys, I'm not going to put on any bullshit persona. If you come here for like a bullshit Tory, um, that's not me, I'm just going to be myself. Um, I, I, I suppose I will propose a opposing argument towards the right honourable gentleman. Um, we're in Brighton, aren't we? So, Caroline. She's mighty fine, um, and um, I, I think I know, I've never performed this poem before, actually, but it's probably the most political one I have, and I wrote it back in last December about something that um, we were all very struck by, and I feel we've all kind of forgotten about it now, but it is something that is still happening, and um, Sorry if you're feeling all like happy and giggly after that. I'm about to put a downer on everything. Um, but um, I hope I'm still in a room of left-wing people. No. Yeah? 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 Because, yeah, I kind of fell asleep halfway through that little bit. Okay, I'll start. Um, this is called Laser. I, actually, I think I know it, but I just use this for product placement reasoning. Um, that's my girl! <laughs> 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 Alright, it's called Lace Clouds, thank you. I wonder why I see a girl half my years being torn away from life. 
Wounds open, arms twisted, body intoxicated. She was only ever exposed to strife. Playing with a rattle when the first bomb dropped, her fingers clung tightly to the panels of her cot. Cries left her mouth, always muffled. A couple of weeks on, no longer was she so shocked. Now I watch as teardrops fall on her eyelashes, her brows singed from the blaze. I sit on my suede sofa, sip a tea, watch a flat screen TV and feel so separated, so agitated and deflated because I am told money for our health is dried out, our education dried out. Homes for our poor, dry, dry, dry. But when ammunitions are involved, money starts falling from the sky. We look up and see clean cushions for clouds. We are told to worry about that slight chance of rain. Never have we known how it feels to see clouds that spell blood. Clouds laced with terror, destruction and pain. Clouds so ridden with filth that you can't even remember how the sun felt. Apparently, there's no safer way to protect our British days than to drop bombs on those who pray to be saved. Send to their clouds our weapons fueled with hate, to fight their weapons fueled with hate, that if you trace back, we only help to create and sold for profit, so that our great nation can piss it all away on bankers' bonuses and increasing MPs' pay, on the oil that keeps these terror clocks turning, but at least the books are balancing up, hey? At least the clouds are clean for just one more day before they suck up all the hate and turn grey as ash and we are all one, stuck in a man-made tray. Soon the clouds won't be able to carry our weight and the rain will return again, but this time not summertime drizzle, British summertime drizzle park picnic rain. Not soggy chain, uh, dry your hair off rain. Not even hail, thunder, lightning rain. Once we thought the gods were punishing us, now we're clever enough to do it ourselves. If I know one thing for sure, I will not spill blood to fuel your hate, just to dance in your rain. Because we will kill the sun if all we create is pain. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good. Jolly good. Marvellous naive perspective there. Um, I'm, my rappers have arrived, uh, which, which is jolly good. Um, so I, as I say, a, a few on, on my side of the, uh, the, the table, across my side of the room at the moment. Um, but first, uh, for your delight, I have the chair of the Brighton Young Conservatives. Give her a big round of applause. Hello. Hello. Um, yes, as Michael mentioned, I've recently been elected as the chair. Well, you've heard all about that. But um, it was very, um, very modern of them, wasn't it? Very modern, you know. We like the gays now. Um, well, as, as part of my new role, I've been looking at um, some of the smaller parties. Um, you know, the, the Conservatives do have a majority government, which is great news. And, um, but, you know, <laughs> as we found out recently with the whole um, UKIP EU uh, mess, and they can have rather a bit of an impact. And um, one of the parties that I've been looking at is um, the Greens. Um, you know, they do still have a seat in Brighton, which is a shame, but they do also have some, some rather interesting ideas. Um, and I think possibly we ought to have a look. The government has issued a public warning. We've run the tests and they do suggest the globe is surely warming. Please stay inside. Try not to drive. I've been advised we no longer stand for things of that kind. If only we'd have known. If only we'd seen the signs, scientists ignoring them time after time unwittingly. We appear to have been pumping gases into the atmosphere which 
bum around absorbing heat to have warmed us up a few too many degrees. Each individual's carbon footprint has brought the country to its knees. Under purple skies barren of trees and grey plumes of smoke, but that bloke's been skipping his recycling days. It has fallen on our shoulders, I'm afraid, to make this problem go away, to clear up the messes of the masses. And let's be clear, I am a conservative. We don't fart, I've had no part in methane admissions, and just last year I bought my second smart car. No, it is the beer cans and spray tans that are at fault. Let us immediately halt the production of anything that could be sold at a pound land. Let's show those rascals with their plastic bags. This is an emergency after all. Whilst this government has toiled away with deals for gas and coal and new planes, the ordinary hard-working people have been unashamed in crawling about all over the place as if they have some sort of claim to this planet. On every other issues, we've had campaigners on all sides, voices in our ears, wherever climate action bribes, uh, cries for help on this most serious of issues. Um, tell you what, I'll chunk up that last bit, won't you? <laughs> I find it depressing to find that they are infecting the minds of the young also. But we will try and liven up the mood as a contrast to the unasked for backing music. It's not the track I would have asked for. Personally, a bit of Tchaikovsky I would have worked with better. Something bombastic. Great. Lovely. Just wanted to suck all the atmosphere from the room, so thank you for helping me with that. Um, I now like to invite to the stage the next performer to put things right. Can she see me? Are you ready? Are you moving? Please do enjoy any Spanish speakers in the crowd. Okay. In this much light, waving, limited effect, but thank you. Um, oh, I, I hope the rest of you just enjoy the sound then. Uh, I'll get out of the way. Hello, I'm Colette. Uh, I'm going to sing in representation of all the Spanish people who are living here. Maybe one of the one of the reasons is because in my country uh, there is a critical situation, political and economical. We have the same conservative group in the government a uh, long time ago with uh, corruption and we can do anything. So the future of uh, the young people is not very good. So thank you very much for inviting me and give me the opportunity to express myself in my language. Thank you. Say. Sí. No tiene freno, tiene desparpajo, sudando instrumentales en la calle con los cascos. Háblame claro, adelántame el peligro, luego ya decido si me sobra con lo mío. Hacerlo público no te asegura el éxito, lo más importante va de puertas para adentro. Sentirme extranjero, currándole en negro, lecciones me recuerdan dónde vengo. Verano lloviendo, inviernos tan largos. Noches que comienzan a las cuatro, a plazo, planes de futuro, la crisis el motivo. De echar de menos a los tuyos, si fuera tu amigo pero ahora es un extraño intereses personales perjudican lo que somos si todo lo que hicimos parece cito humo vivo cada día como único recuérdalo que con el tiempo no caigamos en olvido prefiero me molestes que un silencio prematuro a veces dudo donde pertenezco en este mundo si vayas donde vayas hay vacío hello Right. Yeah. 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 Amanece el día gris, resultado de un país en crisis Y fue por casi, pero seguimos así, apego a la catarsis Busqué las opciones, usando la agresividad Si no se pudo hacer las paces No te engañes con un solo esa veces Todo lo que piensas en algo se mantiene Yo no soy nadie para hablar que es lo que te conviene Tu padre en este entorno, nadie dice si es culpable Estas recomendaciones de que valen el orgullo más profundo Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very, very, very much. I can assure you that when we consider the professions that are of worth to the British people, we will definitely consider, seriously consider, rappers and beatboxers. Um, yes, you may stand a chance. Um, so with that, let me welcome to the stage one of our rappers, one of the rappers from the right wing side of the stage. Welcome, John Clark! Yeah, that was so lovely. So, so touching, isn't it? Emotional, you know? I feel like people need to feel less. They need to consider more what needs to be done. Don't make me have to pay for your lack of ambition. It's the way of nature blatantly is capitalism, isn't it? Because every job on this earth was made by entrepreneurs, but unions molly coddle grovelers who follow the herd. Don't call me one percent. That type of language makes it sound like us and them. But I worked up from nothing at all to reap harvest. It's yours for the taking, why it's called the free market. But the unions enslave trade from making movements. Stop us laying off incompetence and lazy humans. Resting on your laurels like it's done and dusted. You shouldn't feel secure if you're unproductive. The Iron Lady broke the stranglehold of the unions giving management back control. And when you marched on the capital, we sent in the military. Listen, it's the sound of inevitability. It's the price of progress. Let managers manage. Climb the ladder. Save your family being collateral damage. Because the economy's lethargic from industrial industrial action you can mop the street regardless because nothing will happen it's the price of progress the matter is closed you call yourself a doctor you abandoned your post it's out of hand now you seem to bite the hands as it feeds you next time you need a handout it's the hand that you'll speak to <laughs> The customer is always right, kids. That's why we prioritize affordable prices. And with the minimum wage as it stands, we have to overcharge consumers who create that demand. The unions are the enemy within. You cannot have a situation where everybody wins. Even wild animals rolled in their packs, cold the old and the slack that are holding them back. You make us uncompetitive up in the global market because you focus on the workers and their so-called hardships. Oh, I'm broken hearted. China won't be harnessed to these noble farces because it knows its targets. So let me repeat, you make us uncompetitive. By squandering our heritage, we're wallowing in deficit. Remember when they reckoned with the might of England? The corporation known as the United Kingdom is the price of progress. Let managers manage. Climb the ladder, save your family being collateral damage Cause the economy's lethargic from industrial action You can mop the street regardless because nothing will happen It's the price of progress, the matter is closed You call yourself a doctor, you abandoned your post It's out of hand now, you seem to bite the hand as it feeds you Next time you need a handout, it's the hand that you'll speak to <laughs> Very well said, even if I suspect that most people in this tent found it more convincing listening to a language they did not understand than these rhyming applications to Hallmark in the Tory style. But um, with that, I am about to introduce to the stage a stalwart of the Brighton left poetry scene, Mr. Chris Parkinson, please. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is called Red Heat. This is an allegorical tale. The great green dragon that represents capitalism sat uneasy upon his hordes of gold. There was a rumour brewing that a great warrior plucked from the wilds of Islington threatened his cruel empire to take the gold and redistribute it. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I know. I know what's going to sort this out. You need to put on a proper suit, do your tie-up, and sing the national anthem. And while you're doing that, let's all sing the national anthem. Come on, everybody, on your feet. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen. 
Choices, gifts in store on her be pleased to pour. Come on, second verse. Long may she reign, la la la. May she defend our laws and never give us cause to sing with heart and voice. God save the Queen. Thank you, thank you very much, very much. Gentlemen, you know they say um, you drift to the right as you get older. Well, I've drifted to the right in the last half hour. Listening to that has just turned me over to pure, true conservatism. And maybe it's just a coincidence that Together the People has got the same initials as the Transatlantic Trade Partnership. Let's hear it for TTP! We can lose Europe by accident. all the time. It's a bit like being on the poets team at Poets VMCs. <laughs> it's time to put things right. I know you all like to bang on about democracy, but listening to you talk, you want a Caroline Lucas autocracy, just like an eco-Stalin, but lacking the wind farms. Beneath the pavement, a wind farm, but with taxpayers' cash. But what's a budget anyway? It's just a piece of paper, and only another billion pounds to save the rare Malayan tape here. Or cycle lanes galore, but don't let me start on bikes, for it hits the pockets of people like me to stomach the tax hikes. post back politics is here to stay. Paul's derived almost every day. Let disagreement be a thing of the past. If you're not with us, you're against us. So make your minds up fast. So prepare for the election by threatening deselection and add to the stew a lethargic coup and nobody knows what to do. Every day you'll add another vote to the tally by even winning over swing voters with another Corbyn rally by High Priest Jeremy preaching to the converted. He can make, he can part the Red Sea, make wine out of rain, although his powers don't stretch to finding a seat on a train. That's okay, look out, you'll take the power back, or weep bitter tears into a tin of scrumpy jack. You're wandering out about the provenance of the strange man you just met. You better look sharp, cause he's in your shadow cabinet. Yeah, they're just picking, pick, picking people off the street now. The strict requirements they gotta meet now. Do you love Jeremy? Are you true to the cause? You're shadowing health now on a round of applause. For a group of people who profess to hate the Tories, you don't actually seem particularly fond of Labour governments either. Hating on Tony is par for the cause. A Harold Wilson diss used to generate applause. You probably heckle Attlee for not being true to the cause. When you run over political dynasties, consign them to the flames. A bonfire of Blair Blairites, kindled with Kinnocks, stack Browns and Blairs and Balls atop the pyre. Throw Ed Miliband into the fire. Wilson goes up with embers from pipe. Jack Straw breaks the camel's back, but don't believe the hype. Boiling up the recipe from the Robin cookbook. See bird and burning, that's another hook shook. Margaret Beckett, a turbulent priest, harming Harmon, winging eagles, drenching Watson, cooping Cooper, punching Prescott, darting Darling. Got a handle on Mandelson and you're turning the crank. This is the kind of gentler politics. The big tent becomes some kind of Marxist gazebo. And woe decide those who step outside. Oh, the MPs hate the leader, and the members hate the MPs, and the voters hate the members, and the leader's not parting the voters, and no one knows what to do. And so play down those awkward facts that the papers say are scary. You'll turn around and answer back with a link to the canary. Your 16 points down, YouGov says, but you tell a different story. It's clearly the hand of big syphology, and no one on Facebook votes Tory. From outside, it's clearer than breathing or blinking. You guys have gone from Jez We Can to what we you thinking? Glory for the left yet, so send out another death threat. Keep your MP scared for the signal of a blare and nobody knows what to do. But it's just unnecessary, you're own, your, your own worst enemy. Expect some factionality, those who don't vote because they're all the same. Or if 
used to play the political game or placing an X in the box for the unelectable but worthy. Here's to Kemptown's Green Voters for returning Simon Kirby. So then you start to organise. Oh, I can't find the next page. I only wrote this today, I'm sorry. So then you start to organise, let the masses be alerted. You'll bring down the government by preaching to the converted. Strike at the heart of capital by attending a poetry reading. You say you want the poet's voice. What would T.S. Eliot say? He wrote April is the cruelest month, but I bet he bloody love May. It's time for money. <laughs> you take of our t-shirt was made in a sweatshop. You guy Fox Mark straight from 20th Century Fox. You cheer the House of Lords when they shoot the tax credits bill. Cheering on business and unelected businessmen at the future of democracy and you've got a strategy to mobilise those who don't vote well the thing about the people who don't vote the clues in the name hey this doesn't have to rhyme this is the free market baby and I sell my poems to the highest bidder <laughs> that having a part in a one tiny Hollywood film had meant it had gone to his head. And all this in a free press, all this print, all this ink, over whether or not a ticket on the train means anything. It says reserved. Okay, glad we've all moved on from that then. Um, it was a bugbear, it really did get to me. People, yeah. Anyway, please, the last but one from this side giving the true way of life that the suffering and the, can still be amusing. Um, please welcome Daniel Sell. Hello. Um, uh, you might have heard in the news uh, the other day that Southern Rail Failing business, Southern Rail uh, was given £20 million pounds of um, public money as a reward for being shit. Uh, you may have also read that the NHS is failing and the government's response to that is to give it less money. Uh, if anyone can find a better example of just outright corruption in the Western world, then don't let me know. Because I'm moderately feeling. Um, I commute to London every day um, and I've had various experiences with Southern Rail and Thameslink and their parent company Gavoya and the, about three weeks ago I was on the train uh, home from London to Brighton. It was incredibly hot. Uh, it was the, the, the one day of British summer that we had this year and um, Everyone, it was very cramped. It was an eight carriage train rather than a 12 carriage train, which if anyone commutes you will understand that is bad news. Um, everyone was hanging onto the rails like this. Uh, my face was incredibly close to a man's armpit. Everyone's faces were incredibly close to another man's armpit. And I just thought if anybody, if any the smallest thing happens right now, there will actually be a revolution, finally, in this country, there will be a revolution. People will rise up against Southern Rail and then the government. And I mean, it didn't happen, but that's how I imagined it. Um, and that's a poem about, this is a poem about uh, that situation. For reference, it contains the word Bulbarygmus, which is the technical term for a tummy gurgle. Um, this is called Revolting, uh, and it does include mild uh, Nazi connotations. It's a trigger warning. Everyone's arms are in the air, like a recreation of Nuremberg Square. Or worse, a festival where Coldplay headlined. <laughs> 
the arms holding iPads and soaking up vibes. <laughs> like the triumphant trucks of a squadron of elephants, a room full of members at Priapism Anonymous. The arm to my right is more hair than skin, like the owner had dropped it down the back of a fridge and only retrieved it after several weeks, covered in debris and rogue frozen peas. The arm to my left has a scrotum attached. In lieu of an elbow, a sad, sagging sack, like a faceless beige tortoise, all features erased, hung like a manatee's personal space, a Danish pastry crushed by grandmother's arse, or Sir Alan Sugar's time-buggered visage. All rim ripples and wrinkles and concentric chins, the mug of a pug or a big fingerprint. The arm scrotum hovers right next to my eyes. I imagine it gurning and saying, You're fired. <laughs> Before my eyes drift and alight on the line of pits demarcated by circles of brine, giving off heat like a horse's behind, giving off smells like a horse's behind, attracting flies like a horse's behind, erotically moist like... <laughs> We're being held in a queue outside Croydon. Tears and sweat and blood are all boiling. The aircon is gone, the windows do nothing. The carriage walls echo with impotent tutting. The lighter click which lit the wick just started with a borborygmus. For the moment when the rioting started was the exact same moment that commuter farted. <laughs> An ill wind broke free, revolution broke out. As someone once said, let them eat sprouts. <laughs> Dreams, 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 that's all you on the left can offer us, isn't it? That revolution never happened, you just went home, mumbled a little bit and put your Xbox on. Oh, that's why you're going to live in a true blue country forever. When I say true blue, we are kind of one nation Tories nowadays, so uh, we're just going to show how we love you um, with all these lovely love hearts here. If you wouldn't mind, my uh, fellow Tory over there. Not such a clever one, it has to be said. <laughs> we can't all be, uh, you know. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Have, have you all got the left doing? <laughs> so, uh, welcome up now. We have, um, well, you'll see for yourself. Welcome to the stage, Rap Tory! <laughs> Tori seems a little bit shy for a minute. I uh, would like you to uh, welcome to the stage with the Jurassic Park theme tune. Uh, can anyone do that for me? job on the hot duvet holding. I know it's a very tough thing to do, but good job. Like I say, I am a bit <coughs> nervous, um, but there are three things in this world I love. Number one, 
duvet covers with love hearts on. Number two, expressing myself through the art of rhyme. And number three, the Conservative Party. I would like to, I would like to read you um, a poem uh, that I wrote about the pains that some of us on the Rhine can feel. Okay. Breathe. Do you know real pain? I know I do. Do you know how it feels to have nobody like you every day spite you with verbally bite because politically you lean to the right? Sorry. Few people know the battles I've fought, having to tolerate hippies and being forced to play frisbee on walks. Sit around bonfires and talk about a world where there is nothing more but a false love and an eternal force. Cannabis leaving logic scorched. Ease LSD speed and, and coke snorts. I place my knees to the floor and pray for the day that we can adore an economy that has cured and nurtured us since we were born. Instead of Disneyland dreams weaved by those who tease me, told me to take it easy, chill out and relax as if life really were easy peasy lemon. Um. Squeezy. <laughs> more human than our fight to survive, striving for a piece of the pie and simply trying to try. People are so low when they are high, they keep their dreams in a pipe, pipe dreams while mine remain ripe. I am the type who lifts my head to the sky by a practical financial rise and I'm the bad guy. I choose to do it myself because when I was nine and I pooed myself in front of the entire school, who would help? No one. <laughs> and a stinky smell rose from my pants. I'd done two poos and decided to throw one as a bit of gross fun. But all my fellow raptors thought it was disgusting. And every day since I've been adjusting because back then I felt so helpless. And my advice is deal with your own shit and forget about everyone else's. <laughs> because ladies and gentlemen, it is a dog eat dog world. And if a poodle eats a shih tzu, then a poodle poos the shit of a bit shih tzu. And if a poodle poos the shit of a bit shih tzu, what's your shoe? You have a shitty shoe from a poodle pooing a shih tzu. If a shih tzu pooed a poodle, it'd be a shih tzu poodle shit from Chinaman with a noodle. Wrap around a strudel so, so we can poo. <laughs> so, so a poodle can poo a pooey noodly strudely shit to out boozly too and fart musically through a musy noodly strudely pooey musical, musical shit on a shoe. It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> And if we Tories added poo, as in Winnie, I have to ask you, what then would we be? Pricks. <laughs> want to know before we have the, uh, the, the last speaker on, uh, if we've swung any of you, uh, after hearing the arguments from the right side of the stage here, uh, how many of you are now considering voting Tory? Yeah. That's, uh, that's at least three or four, and we can form a minority government out of that anyway. There might, there might, there might be some shy Tories here, we're not quite ready. And if that's all right, you can just come and see us afterwards and we'll sign you up to the party and you get to meet William Hague and we've got that to say. <laughs> uh, but uh, in the interest of democracy, uh, we'll welcome back Comrade Lawley uh, to have his say. Welcome, Comrade Lawley. <laughs> the interests of democracy, he says, he wants to bring back feudalism. He wants it so that you can only vote if you're a man with a house. 
Ah, yeah, yes, I know, it's not good, it's not good. Yes, I, I don't believe him going on about democracy like this. Um, it's nice to hear that even with all this propaganda, you are not so easily swayed. Uh, have you enjoyed your day at Together the People? Has it felt like a Together experience for people? I don't know, I only got here for this evening. A bit, a bit underwhelming, to be honest. But um, anyway, not this one. Yes, um, really should have been more organized with this. I was too distracted by technically a, a cold-blooded proof of David Icke. Um, confusing for me, but uh, typical of the capitalists trying to pull strings from behind the curtains. Uh, this next piece will require me to drop this slightly tortuous accent you may be pleased to hear when i was at re-education camp for briefly failing to show sufficient faith in the real leader jeremy um we were taught that we should try and view things through the eyes of another so this is an exercise in imagination it may be difficult for some but I try to think what life is like for someone who likes UKIP. It wasn't easy. I needed hugs afterwards. Yeah. It is called Only He Can Save Us. <clears throat> and uh, I have to do it in a voice that's a little bit closer to this. <laughs> because I've not really rehearsed it with a Russian accent. I'm not 100% sure it would work all the way through like that. Nigel, I'm scared. It's too much, I didn't used to mind, but I'm not very good with change. I wrote to my MP, he didn't reply. It's not that I'm, no, not at all. I get along fine with Mr. Patel in the local shop, works all the hours God sends. Always a smile to greet me. Our new plumber, Pavel, is lovely. He's, he's very good, he's from Poznan. Couldn't he commute? <laughs> Nigel will save us, he has the answer. It's just bad luck that your friends don't know how to be subtle. I thought Bongo Bongo Land changed its name after independence. Yeah. I'm not completely convinced that gay marriage can have meteorological consequences, but do they have to be visible? It's not that I'm... No, I'm sure I'm not. I was on the bus the other day, and people were speaking a language I didn't understand. They might have been talking about me. I don't think I was staring. It's not that I... No, that wouldn't feel right. Oh, but Nigel, I do feel better after seeing you on question time. Have you got your own dressing room? Work out how I do you know, that's an out-of-date bit from when I originally wrote this. Uh, Nigel, can I have a hug if I buy you a pint? They say such mean things about you. I'm sure you turn up for work more often than that. Those lefties who shouted F off back to Toad Hall. Is it true that you can use your eyes to swallow? I'm not sure I quite understand the concept of a respectable BNP vote. It makes as much sense to me as applying for a job at an institution you don't believe should exist. Isn't that a bit like an atheist trying to become a cardinal at the Vatican and then not turning up? <laughs> Nigel, I'm scared, but I won't ask any more questions. I don't quite get the concept of nuance. Oh, Nigel, if yours an open marriage, we could forever dismiss any talk of homophobia. I'm sure your colleagues wouldn't mind everything they said was banter. Well, I'll recruit as best I can to protect you from flying eggs and parcel turds. We'll be the Farragistas. That's not got a nice ring, hasn't it? Oh, Nigel, look what you've done now. You've even gone and appeared on stage with Trump. Yeah. I mean, you wondered how to follow Brexit. Are you sure that was the best move? I don't know, but you are the dear leader. And as the right have been pointing out, we should give up thinking. So, well... I await your next illustration as to our beautiful future that awaits now that your vote has happened. I try not to feel scared, but I need more medication. Anyway, that's been it from this side. It's been emotional. Who's up for a revolution? We can take pitch light, pitchforks and the tea lights to the Westminster, collectively tut in their general direction. Have you got any more from your side? No, we're done. No, no, no. I think we're done. So uh, if I can welcome to the government benches upon the stage, we have the Right Honourable Chris Parkinson. We have the Chair of the Bright
Lords and Young Conservatives Connor Byrne. We have John Clark. And we have Rap Tory. Can we get a chair down for the right side? Yes, 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 yes. Call up yours and we'll take a proper vote. Go on. Call up your side. Go on. I don't know if there's room on the stage. Come on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I have to slip back into character. It was part of the contract I signed. Uh, please welcome back all those who spoke on the right side. That is, of course, the left side. We did not choose these things. Hello, Gage. We can make this like many people trying to fit into phone box. It's not kind of fun. Um, Chris is already here, the turncoat. Uh, Daniel, sir, please do come. Remember, those on the right are in favour of Southern Rail. <laughs> and Carol. And uh, Carol, yes. So, now has come the time to vote. Um, if you uh, believe in us here, if we've swayed you, if you now know that uh, you need to be handing over power to us who are born to hold it, uh, give us a great big cheer now! Yay! <laughs> All right, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yes, we've got we've got one. Now you try that. I believe it was a more accurate reflection of how whole health, how whole tent thinks that every one of the performers was on the left side of stage. If this is more your sign of hope for the future, please make some noise. Now. I don't know if we could describe that as close. Um, could we get another shout out for those who think maybe they could, when they're all geriatric, losing their minds, agree with the Tory? Not even sympathy this time. Not even sympathy. Okay, at least can you give us a round of applause for being part of the democratic process? All up here on stage, a round of applause please for all the poets and MCs! Thanks for having us.